Hello and welcome to Akivata Reviews. Today let's take a look at the 2015 Honda Odyssey. This is the fifth generation that has been in production from 2013 till present. This minivan is available either as a 7 or 8 seater and it competes against the likes of the Toyota Alphard and Nissan El Grand. In Honda's hierarchy, this minivan is positioned above the Honda Stepwagon. You can get a 2014 or 2015 Honda Odyssey from around 1.4 million to around 1.8 million depending on the trim level as well as the mileage. 2016 models and onwards are a bit more expensive. There are two engine options, a 2.4 liter four cylinder petrol engine or a 2.0 liter hybrid that was available as from 2016. So if you want the hybrid model, then go for 2016 models and onwards. The 2.4 liter comes paired to a CVT gearbox while the 2.0 liter hybrid comes paired to an eCVT gearbox. It is claimed that the 2.0 liter hybrid can achieve between 24 to 26 km per liter. You will have to be very light footed to achieve these figures. In real world expect somewhere between 20 to around 25 km per liter which is still quite good although it will also depend on how loaded the vehicle is. It can even get to below 20 km per liter if the vehicle is heavily loaded and going up some steep inclines. The 2.4 liter on the other hand can achieve between 8 to around 13 km per liter. The fuel tank is 55 liters. As for the service costs, it will cost about 11,000 shillings on average to do the minor service, which will be done after 5,000 km. But if you use synthetic oil, then your service intervals will be longer. The major service will cost about 20,000 shillings on average, and it will be done after 10,000 km. This minivan gets front ventilated disc brakes and solid discs at the back. The cab weight ranges between 1700 to 1880 kilograms, so it's not a light vehicle by any means. The ground clearance is 150 millimeters, which is slightly below the recommended 165 millimeters. And this being a long vehicle, it will definitely get scratched on the underside while going over some bumps. So it may be important to install slightly larger wheels. Lastly, some of the extra features you can get in this minivan include alloy wheels, fog lights, second row captain seats, a sunroof, dual power rear sliding doors, automatic lights and wipers, rear entertainment screen, and chrome accents on the exterior. So now let's take a look at the interior of this minivan. So being the base model, this one misses out on electrically adjustable front seats. So you just get manual adjustments. This particular one is a uh, beige interior and the first impression is that it looks quite premium especially due to that glossy wood finish on the dashboard. It also misses out on a leather wrapped steering wheel. The parking brake is foot operated. It comes with a cruise control. So this is the instrument cluster and it looks simple and neat. You do get an icon button, traction control, and being that this is the base model, you get only the rear left door that is power operated, and you can also switch off that function. So there is an aftermarket infotainment screen with reversing camera, and it sits in between these two S events, which are adjustable. This minivan gets touch sensitive AC controls, which is quite nice. Start stop button. Then there is a power outlet, 12 volt, a bit of storage, and this shelf can be adjusted. You can either pull it slightly outwards or tuck, in, tuck it in into the dashboard. You get two cup holders that can slide outwards. Like most other minivans, there is space in between the two front seats. The glove box is decently sized, but does not have a locking mechanism. This particular one has a dash cam. The rear view mirror is manually dimming sunglass compartment then it has a mirror so that you can be able to see the passengers at the back 
two reading lights. Then the sun visors also do get mirrors but unfortunately no lights the higher trim levels get lights they are grab handles on all the sides even the passenger side does not have a light but you do get a mirror generally it feels quite nice the seats are very comfortable and this is these are fabric seats you can also get a leather interior in black or beige compared to the noah and voxy this interior looks way more premium and a class above the interiors you find in those two vehicles so let's take a look at the back seats this being the base model you can only operate this right rear door manually you can use this grab handle to get inside and the stepping height is quite low being that it's not as tall as the Alphard, there's so much legroom and more than enough foot room to stretch out. There's a pocket behind the left front seat. The seats are very comfortable. You can also get this minivan as a seven seater. The seven seater version has two captain seats in the second row, which are very, very comfortable. You do get a reading lamp as well as AC vents. You also get a grab handle and a hook. So the AC at the back can be controlled from here. So you don't need to control the AC at the back from the front. This other side also gets a grab handle and AC vents. So even on a long journey, there won't be any problem because the cool air will reach the passengers at the back even the third row also gets a events so it will be quite comfortable to access the third row of seats you locate this lever and pull it this particular minivan i think it has a problem because that lever is supposed to push this seat forwards but it has a slight problem so if you are going to view a honda odyssey do take note, note of that some of these mechanisms can fail at times so the third row of seats is quite spacious just like the second row of seats and three adults can be able to sit here even on a long journey there is good leg room there's also good foot room the headroom is quite good you get a power outlet 12 volt a cup holder so you can be able to charge your phone at the back as i said earlier you also get s events a reading lamp and a grab handle so in terms of comfort it's just as good as the back rows of the toyota alfred and it's more comfortable compared to a mazda biante or a toyota noah and voxy this beige interior also makes this place look and feel quite airy. You don't feel claustrophobic at all. Higher trim levels do get in entertainment screens mounted at the top, just in front of the rear AC controls to keep the passengers at the back entertained. It's quite a good interior and it feels on par with something like uh, Nissan El Grand and even the king of the segment which is the Toyota Alphard. So if you want to exit the third row of seats, you just locate that lever and you push it and then the seat will move forwards or backwards. So if you, even if you need more legroom at the third row of seats, you can just use that lever to move the second row of seats frontwards or backwards so as i said this but on the right side it has a problem that's why it's not working as it should once you're done you just lift up the backrest and it's quite heavy it will require some effort the aperture is quite nice 
it's wide enough so accessing the second row and even the third row is quite easy it's wider than in the Mazda Biante so there you have it this is a good looking minivan but do let me know in the comment section which one you think looks better between the Alphard Nissan El Grand and this Honda Odyssey it tends to be slightly shorter than those two competitors being a Honda it's expected that it will be very reliable the 2.4 liter engine in this minivan has also been used in other Hondas such as the Accord and CRV and it has proven to be very reliable it's very spacious and it feels quite premium on the inside this is definitely a class above the likes of the Toyota Voxy and Noah. The interior quality of materials is also quite nice. It is more affordable than the Alpha, which costs over 2 million for 2014 and 2015 models. Now, is it as premium and luxurious as the Alpha and El Grand? Yes, I think it is, especially the higher trim levels that have very comfortable second row captain seats and even screens at the back for entertainment. It's quite an appealing minivan and you should not overlook it. If you are in the market for a Toyota Alphard or a Nissan El Grand, then it's very important to also have a look at this Honda Odyssey. It's also a very good value proposition. For example, this is a base model, but it gets some good features such as AC at the back, touch sensitive AC controls, wood trim in the interior for that premium look, and overall it looks quite good. You can install some aftermarket alloy wheels and some fog lights and it will look even better. It will no longer look like a base model. Do let me know which one you will go for between this and the king of the segment, which is the Toyota Alpha. Personally, I think it will be quite a difficult decision to make, but I think I'm more inclined to this Honda Odyssey, especially after having a feel of this minivan. But don't take my word for it. The best thing to do is to have a good look at both minivans, then decide on which one you like most. Both are very reliable. The Alpha is more expensive. It has a very good resale value and it sits up higher than this Odyssey. The Odyssey, on the other hand, is more affordable and not as common as the Toyota Alpha. So for those who prefer, who prefer less common vehicles, then this can be a very good alternative. So I hope this has been helpful. Thanks a lot for watching. Please consider subscribing to the channel for more informative content on cars. You can also use the details in the description box to support the production of this content by donating. Your support will be much appreciated. For any inquiries, feel free to reach me via WhatsApp or email. That's it for this episode. See you in the next one.